Studio Classroom is Welcome to Studio Classroom on the air. My name is Gabe, and I think that today is a great day to learn something new. It certainly is. Welcome, friends. My name is Anne Marie. We have a really exciting lesson for you today because we are going to be talking all about dirt. <laughs> How exciting. Th yes. Do you think about dirt very much, Gabe? Oh, no, I don't. Um, but when I do think about dirt, which is not very often. I think um, about the word dirty because mm. dirt is dirty, <laughs> yeah. right? Um, and you don't want to get dirt on your clothes when you go outside. Um, it, it, little kids love to play in the dirt sometimes. And that also reminds me of that phrase. I think um, it's a pound of dirt before you die or something like that. Oh, talking about how little kids should come into contact with the environment and dirty things. Yeah, there's a related one, right? A pound of, your, of dirt before you're five years old. Mm. And the idea that you should let kids go out and play, um, even if it's a little bit dirty outside, because maybe they'll develop um, something that, they can help, that can help them against allergies yeah. and other sicknesses. Develop some kind of immunity or something like that. I loved playing in the dirt when I was growing up. I have some really good memories of digging holes and putting things in them and making mud and things like that. What are your thoughts when you think about dirt, friends? Today's a good day to think about that because our article is called The Soil Under Your Feet. Let's get right into it by opening up our magazines and going to the first reading of the day. The Soil Under Your Feet Soil is essential to our lives in many ways. People don't like dirt tracked into their homes, and cleaning it up can be annoying. But soil is fundamental for healthy food production. Good, fertile soil produces abundant food crops to feed a hungry world. Agricultural products from around Taiwan come from different soils. The black soil near Huadian and Taitong is suitable for growing corn and rice. In the acidic red soil on Arishan, oolong trees grow well. Taiwan has been nicknamed the Kingdom of Fruit due to its unique soil conditions. They allow the island to produce an impressive array of fruit. Hi everyone, welcome to Language Lab. I'm Jack. We're going to look at fertile. This word means fertile. The middle part of the U.S. is known as the country's bread basket because of its fertile soil. 美国中部因为土壤肥沃，所以有美国粮仓之称。另外 ，fertile ground for something 的意思呢是成为什么的沃土。例如 ，New York City's acting schools make the city a fertile ground for those who want to be professionals in the field. 对那些想成为专业演员的人来说，纽约市因为有好几所戏剧学校，所以就成了栽培演艺人才的沃土。Fertile 也可以用来形容想象力丰富，例如 ，Harriet's fertile imagination led to the development of her magical playground for children. Harriet 丰富的想象力让她发展出自己的神奇儿童游乐园。接着来看 agricultural 这个形容词，意思呢是农业的。比如 ，with the development of so many cities, the world's agricultural land is disappearing. 随着许多城市的发展，全球的农业用地正在消失中。或者是 ，according to the UN, 
West Africa needs to develop its agricultural areas in order to produce more crops. 根据联合国表示，西非需要开发农业区域来生产更多的农作物。再举个例句 ，Sales of agricultural machinery have fallen because farmers are losing money every year. 由于农民每年都在亏钱，所以农业机械的销量下降。Okay, let's get back to our teachers. Thank you so much, Jack. All right, let's get right into it, friends. The soil under your feet. Soil is essential to our lives in many ways, and as you just heard, this first paragraph, this first section, was all about the different types of soil and what you can grow in those different types of soil. And before we get into that, we are going to talk a little bit about dirt in general. People don't like dirt tracked into their homes, and cleaning it up can be annoying. I certainly don't like cleaning up dirt off of my floors in my home. So let's talk about that phrase to track something in. All right, if you're tracking something into the house,、uh, that means you're leaving a trail of dirt or something else in. A certain place with your feet. Okay, so it was on the bottom of your shoes from the outside, and you've taken it into the house. You're tracking it into the house. On a rainy day, you might track water into your office or to a store. Floors can get really slippery and wet.、So、you have to be careful on those type of days when people are tracking in water. What do you think about when people? Take an umbrella into a department store, Anne Marie.、Mm. Instead of leaving the umbrella by the door, they take their wet umbrella, and it's leaving a trail of water wherever they go. That gets so slippery. It it's could. It's really easy to fall in those kind of situations. Yeah, it really is. Well, anyway, we're talking about tracking something into your home and and tracking dirt, right? And then for the rest of the lesson, we're not going to see the word dirt that much, but we are going to see the word soil. Now, are dirt and soil the exact same thing? Well, when I think about dirt, I do think of Things that might be dirty a little more often, maybe something more negative comes to mind. However, in many cases, dirt is actually just soil. Those two words are interchangeable, but when you use them, you might have a different feeling or a different meaning. When we use the word soil, we usually think about growing things or just the ground under our feet, as our lesson says. We read here, but soil is fundamental for healthy food production. Good fertile soil produces abundant food crops to feed a hungry world. All right, a hungry world. We use this phrase to talk about the fact that there are many different countries around the world、uh, where it is pretty hard to get food.、Um, there are a lot of starving people in the world, literally starving. Right? They actually need more food,、um, and so we can use this phrase to talk about feeding different populations like this. Because the fact is, we do have a hungry world. That's right, and we also saw the word crops in that second sentence. There, crops are basically. Talking about what is growing, different things grow in different places of the world. Where I come from, a common crop is corn, but in different places, it can be different things. We read here: agricultural products from around Taiwan come from different soils. The black soil near Hualien and Taidong is suitable for growing corn and rice. All right, so we're going to take a look at some different soils around here. This is something I don't think about too often when I visit. Places around Taiwan, I don't think about oh, what color is the soil? But actually, different soils have different purposes, right? So the soil near Hualien it's suitable for growing corn and rice,、uh, but we see something else here in the acidic red soil on Alishan. Oolong trees grow well. Now I didn't know this about oolong trees that they grow better with acidic red soil or acidic soil. I do know that Alishan is a beautiful place to visit. I would love to visit sometime. I have never been. Well, we read here Taiwan has been nicknamed the Kingdom of Fruit due to its unique soil conditions. They allow the island to produce an impressive array of fruit. Now that is something that has always stood out to me about Taiwan is the. Sheer number of fruit that is grown here—so many different kinds. Yeah, it's true. What 
is your favorite fruit, friends? If it's a tropical fruit, it can probably be grown in Taiwan. As you see here, there is an array of fruit. We get the idea that there is a variety of fruit. There are lots of different kinds. Now, this makes me kind of hungry, and it makes me think about what I just said about a hungry world. We don't just use this phrase to talk about populations where people might actually be starving, but the fact is, everyone around the world does need to eat, right? So we really are a hungry world. That's true. That is something that everyone has in common, no matter where you come from. Well, we have more to talk about when it comes to soil in just a minute, but right now, let's go to today's Info Cloud. Hello, friends. Welcome to InfoCloud. Hey, how's everything going in your life? I remember you had a new baby and you're taking up a lot of new projects. Things looked a little stressful for you, John. Yeah, I was under a lot of pressure, but now I'm getting a hang of being a father and the projects are going really well, so everything is coming up roses now. Oh, everything is what? Everything is coming up roses. That means everything is going well. Oh, I see. This expression, everything is coming up roses, does give me the visual impression of something bright and beautiful. Exactly. When you see roses, it gives you a, a refreshing feeling. It's hard to feel bad when you see beautiful roses. So. Everything is coming up roses is implying that you feel good about everything around you. That's right. When you feel good about things that are happening in your life, it means they're going really well. 如果你的生活中一切看起来都相当顺利,你可以用今天分享的用语, Everything is coming up roses来表达. Everything is coming up roses. 字面上就是所有的事情看起来就像玫瑰花绽放那样子的令人开心。意思就是非常的顺利。如果有人问你最近如何或是某方面现在状况如何呢？你就可以说，Everything is coming up roses. 一切都非常顺利。这就是今天的 Info Cloud. 我们下次云端见。Well, hello there, and welcome back to Studio Classroom. I have a little quiz for you over something we discussed earlier. Keep those magazines closed, friends. Okay, what soil is good for those oolong trees on Alishan? Mm. Anne Marie, here are your choices. Okay. Light green soil, baby blue soil. What? Yellow brick road, yellow soil, or acidic red soil. You've made this very, very easy for me. I have. Acidic red soil. Yeah, you're right. I've never seen baby blue soil before, have you? No, I haven't either. <laughs> I'm sure you got the answer correct too, friends. It is acidic red soil. Okay, let's continue learning about the soil under our feet. Oh, hey. The soil under your feet. However, not all soil is good for food production. Some has other uses. Laterite, a unique soil in the tropics, is used for making the bricks for building houses in areas of Asia. People on Jeju Island in South Korea use the volcanic mud there to make its famous masks. The clay near Beitou, Taiwan, is prized for making fine ceramics. Soil is so important that the United Nations celebrates World Soil Day on December 5th. It was created to draw attention to this valuable resource. Volcanic 这个形容词意思呢是火山的。譬如, 
There are many volcanic beaches in Hawaii. 夏威夷有许多的火山海滩。Volcanic 也有猛烈的或是暴躁的意思。譬如 ，Everyone is careful what they say around Alfred because of his volcanic temper. 大家在 Alfred 旁边说话都很小心，因为他脾气暴躁。Volcanic 的名词是 volcano， 意思呢就是火山。比如 ，We flew over the volcano to get a better look down inside it. 我们飞到火山上方，以便看清楚火山的内部。最后来看 ，draw attention to 这个片语动词，意思呢是把注意力引到某处。比如 ，Dr. Emery drew attention to the poverty that exists among the tribes in northern Africa. Emery 博士把注意力放到北非部落的贫困问题，或者是 Debra sneaked quietly into the room so she wouldn't draw attention to herself. Debra 悄悄地溜进房间里去，以免引起别人的注意。再举个例句 ，Haley didn't want to draw attention to a hole in the living room wall, so she placed a picture over it. Haley 不希望大家看到客厅上的洞，所以在上面挂了一张照片。All right, let's get back to our teachers. Thank you, Jack, for drawing attention to some of those words. Let's get into the second part of our lesson here today. However, not all soil is good for food production. So. Earlier, we were talking about how some things can be used to grow different crops, or things like rice and corn, and some things can be used to grow tea leaves. But not all soil is good for food production. Maybe we use it for another purpose, right? Laterite, a unique soil in the tropics, is used for making bricks for building houses in areas of Asia. Maybe you've seen bricks like this before. Yeah, and these are some very red, brightly colored bricks because of the soil that is used to make them. Now, bricks make up the walls of a house, and there's lots of different things we can talk about when it comes to houses.、Um, the walls of a house and a ceiling. That's part of the house inside, and the roof is on top of the house. Oh, that's right. Don't confuse ceilings and roofs, friends. That's right. The ceiling is what you can see at the top on the inside of the house. But the roof is what you might、uh, walk out onto the top of when you're on the top of the house, right?、Um, every house has a roof, <laughs> or it should. Maybe some roofs are blown away during a typhoon, right? Maybe you know something that my house had growing up in the states that most houses here don't have is a basement. Oh, a basement. Yeah, here、mm -hmm. basements are usually used for parking. That's the B1, B2, B3 that you see on those elevators. That stands for basement. A lot of houses in the Midwest in the USA have basements.、Um, it's a place where we store things, and it's a lot cooler than the rest of the house.、Uh, some houses will have a balcony as well. And that is, if you're on the second floor or higher,、uh, if you have a place where you can walk outside of your main living area and see what is outside, then you have a balcony.、Um, and an another thing that some houses have is a porch. Ah, my、Did、house in the states had a porch too. Yeah. Okay. Not a lot of houses here do. Not a lot of apartments do anyway. But if you live, especially on the first floor, you have you might have a porch. It's an area that you can walk out your front door or maybe your back door. You might have a back porch. And you can walk around, or even sit and just relax on your porch. So those are some different parts of a house. But let's continue learning here about soil. People on Jeju Island in South Korea use the volcanic mud there to make its famous masks, the face masks. Yeah, and we learned that the clay near Beitou, Taiwan, is prized for making fine ceramics. Now, what what does it mean if a place is prized for something? Yeah, that means that people really value this place or this. Thing for whatever reason, right? So it's prized for that. Now, I would like to actually visit Jeju Island in South Korea, but Jeju Island is actually really close to Busan, or Busan is the closest major city. So let's go to today's SC Travel and learn about Busan right now. Annyeong. That means hello in Korean. That's right. We are going to South Korea today to explore the beautiful city of Busan. Busan, 
is located at the southern tip of South Korea. So it's very popular in the summer as tourists go to the beach. And the most popular beach in Busan is Hyundai Beach. Whether you want to surf, swim, or just lay in the sand, Hyundai Beach is the place to go. If you like water sports, you can head to Gwangali Beach. Here, you can windsurf, paddleboard, or rent a motorboat. This beach is especially beautiful at night. The famous Gwangandaegyo Bridge, one of the longest in Korea, is lit up with colorful, changing lights. Wow. If you can't get enough of these sea views, check out these Songdo cloud trails to see the sea from another point of view. Parts of this walkway are glass, so you can look down at the ocean. Be sure to look up too, and you'll see some of Busan's iconic cable cars soaring high above you. Are you getting hungry? Food isn't far away. Naturally, this coastal town is known for its delicious fish. One local specialty is an elmuk, or fish cake. You can't go wrong with fish on a stick. <laughs> Have you ever wanted to be a movie star? Busan is known for its film industry, and you can become a part of it at the Busan Museum of Movies. You can jump behind the camera to fight off dinosaurs and bad guys, and then edit the footage yourself. Make your final stop the Gamcheon Culture Village. This colorful, art-filled village is named the Machu Picchu of Busan because the houses are built like steps into the hill, just like Machu Picchu. If you say something is the something of something, you're saying it resembles another famous place, like Budapest is the Paris of the East. Well, I'll have to leave it at that for now. But I'll see you next time on SC Travel. All right, well, travel to Busan if you get the chance, but let's come on back over here to talk about something you can find here in Taiwan, because our lesson mentions that Taiwan is the king of fruits, or the kingdom of fruits, right? Um, what are your favorite fruits here in Taiwan, Anne-Marie? Well, I have to say, I hadn't had a lot of tropical fruit before I moved here. I just didn't really have a chance since Ohio's climate is so cold and mm -hmm. all of our tropical fruit was imported, so it was super expensive. My favorite fruits here, well, definitely mango and pineapple, I have to say. Well, I love mango too. Do you like those mango smoothies in the summer? I love mango smoothies what about, in the summer. Yeah, chopping. What about like with the mango chunks on and top the of that? condensed milk. Yeah, it's oh, so good, right? So good. But what about you? What kind of fruits do you like? Well, you said my favorite. Uh, All-time favorite fruit is mango. Ah. Yeah, so I can have that um, in any way, right? As a smoothie or just eaten like, you know, you cut up the mango and eat the pieces or in swapping or anything else. I also like custard apples and I haven't had those a lot recently, mm. um, but I believe that uh, most of the custard apples in the world are actually grown here in Taiwan. Are those the ones that kind of look like a tomato a little bit? No, they're green and they look oh. like a, a Buddha's head. Oh, I know what you're talking right? about. You know what I'm talking about? Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, friends, what about you? The kingdom of fruit. What is your favorite fruit from Taiwan? Or just talk about your favorite fruit in general. We have more to learn about soil. Of course, soil is very important for healthy fruit to develop, right? We have more to learn about soil next time right here on Studio, Studio Classroom. Classroom. A good friend lasts a lifetime. I am so proud to have you in my life A good friend lasts a lifetime